All right, good afternoon. Uh, we are the Moon Rockers team from the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. Uh, we'll be giving you a presentation overview of our robot, um, what we've done this year as a team, and, and where, we're, where we're trying to go with it from there. All right, so the, the team has been competing at the NASA Robotic Mining Competition since its beginning, um, when it was first formed as the Moon Robotics uh, Competition. Um, so this is our ninth year competing. Um, as a team, and um, what's cool about it for us is that it serves as both a senior design um, capstone project as well as just an organization for younger members and underclassmen to, to be involved with the systems engineering project. Um, so we've had 19 active members be involved this year um, with both designing, um, getting the shop and, and building new parts and, and just learning the overall process and, and getting really excited to go to the competition this year. Um, um, our goals for this year were to kind of continue on from last year, build upon last year's successes, and, and try to um, adjust some, spark, some parts that we identified as weaknesses. So um, we wanted to continually, uh, effectively excavate, and then um, collect the regolith and store it in our hopper, uh, successfully traverse the, pl the playing field again and deposit it into the hopper, um, do that all really well again. That was something we felt like we succeeded at last year. Um, we wanted to increase the mechanical and electrical reliabil reliability of the robot. Um, and because uh, in the past several years we've kind of had some second round jitters where we, uh, where we have failures during the second round and so we wanted to eliminate that and have two successful competition runs. Uh, we wanted to have full autonomy this year, that was a goal for us um, initially, um, to implement autonomy. Um, and we also just wanted a sustainable design that could be um, uh, built upon for future years as well. Um, some of our quantitative goals, um, we want to equal or succeed or exceed our, our de um, deposition last year of four kilograms of icy regolith. We wanted to equal that or better. Um, and then we also were at about 78 kilograms for our weigh-ins last year and we wanted to reduce weight to a point where we were comfortably under 75 kilograms by um, identifying a few key parts to um, reduce weight on. And then, um, so our overall design philosophy for this year um, to achieve those goals was to um, keep this, um, this robot, which is actually last year's robot, intact um, and leave it running all year so that autonomy could be developed on it and testing could be done on it to identify those key issues that we really want to um, change. And then while that one is intact and autonomy is being developed, we wanted a, a separate part of the team to um, be building a new robot completely from scratch, independent from this robot, and that, that way um, we can pick just a few parts that we want to increase the reliability of and, and change design parts of, but the overall geometry and the way the robot functions is the same, so that way at the end of the year, Atomic could just be taken off this robot and put on the new one, and it's plug and play, it's, it's um, systems engineering where it's, it all fits together. Um, so that, that was our initial goal. Um, we also, so that, that kind of helps with the quality and the reliability. Um, it turned out that this, this wasn't entirely feasible for us. It was a really ambitious goal that we felt like we could get um, done at the beginning of the year and just due to some setbacks and, and not being, um, or not getting quite as much manufacturing done at the beginning of the year, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't fully realized. We were able to build basically almost all of the entire mechanical chassis um, but it, it didn't leave enough time for, for wiring of the robot, unfortunately, and, and getting the, a, any code on, on the new robot. So, so that was, that was the, a risk of this year was not, not reaching that fully new robot. It, it's, a, it's a big project to build from scratch, so it was ambitious, but uh, we still left a, a very, very good starting point to build on even further for next year. And so, so we're still pleased with that aspect. The design process the team adopted was very simple and very straightforward. We identified the main technical and non-technical goals that NASA set for us, and then depending on the people, the members' interest, we divided into different teams. Uh, we also derived a list of requirements that we needed to fulfill from those um, objectives from NASA's uh, competition goals. Um, the design process involved us splitting into teams and assigning different tasks to each group so that we can 
de develop individual systems and then test them collectively as a whole. Um, as you can see, we use the figure here to implement what, deci what decisions we made. And we further, we also used uh, risk matrices to know which component to buy and things like that. Um, for our capstone project, we had to do two presentations, three presentations, uh, one for uh, the preliminary design review, for which we outline all our um, objectives and all the problems that we're going to face and all the possible solutions for those problems. And we decided and used our risk matrices to identify the optimal way to solving those problems. For our critical design review, we, we had all the designs implemented um, in software, as in we had all the test rates built up, we had tested individual systems, and we presented that data to our advisors for our critical design review and had the, and have them approve it. Uh, for the senior design fair, we presented our final design to the public so that they can have come in and um, tell us how good we did or how bad we did, um, and it was fairly a, a good success. So for one of our uh, alternative alternative analysis procedures, we use a risk or design, excuse me, decision matrix to uh, decide what kind of batteries we wanted to use. In the past, we discovered that uh, we were using batteries that weighed about not or six kilograms and uh, had a capacity way beyond the scope of the competition. So we decided that we wanted to figure out how we could reduce the weight and subsequently have to reduce a little bit of the capacity. Uh, what we ended up using was uh, a design matrix rubric first to figure out how we wanted to score each of the uh, batteries. We used stuff like uh, continuous amps, uh, estimated runtime, total weight, total price, uh, max vol uh, voltage discharge, and max pulse amps. Using this rubric, we created the matrix here where we uh, discovered that the best uh, best battery to use was the LiPo batteries. Now you'll notice that these two values are identical, however, the Zippy LiPo was slightly lighter, so we decided to use that one. Innovation and past systems. Uh, so this is currently six sixth iteration of the robot. Uh, previously we've had a lot of troubles, a lot of challenges. 2014, uh, it was kind of a bad year, overall system, computer, electrical, and mechanical. 2015, we moved to implementation of our articulated chassis that allows us to traverse over rocks and different obstacles, and also focus on wire management. 2016, we further refined our wire management system, and then also moved from a hopper to a conveyor belt, which acted as a hopper in the same instance. 2017, refining the system that we had in place, trying to make it better and improve on it. 2018, again refining the system, but more focusing on a sustainable design of, design of that system. And then also implementation of our IC regular system, which we currently have today. Uh, some of the innovation, mechanical, innovative mechanical aspects that we focused on this year in 2019, uh, new gearbox and collection system and tensioners. So we had a 90 gear, not 90 degree gearbox before, uh, we changed that over, reduced weight, moved to a linear gearbox, bring the system together. Uh, new tensioning system so we can measure the tension on each chain individually. Uh, deposition system, we focused on making a tensioner that would allow us to measure the tension that we're providing on a deposition belt. Uh, this was a spring tensioner that we implemented on this. Uh, as Carter mentioned before, we did have trouble with our deposition drive belt breaking in previous years decided to go and more, be more reliable, switch to a chain system with 25 chain on the deposition drive. And our deposition side panels, uh, on the old system we had large plates on the front to go and increase the size of the hopper or the, uh, the, the area that we collect the radio within. Instead we did away with that and made the side panels uh, just a little taller to make it one uh, congruent system. So as Carter mentioned earlier, autonomy was a big focus this year. We spent a lot of effort building up an autonomy system. However, unfortunately, due to time constraints, we weren't able to finish the autonomy where we wanted it to be. So we made the difficult decision to scratch autonomy for the competition itself. That being said, I'm going to talk about some autonomy things today because we did put some work into it, put some design into it. So the, the sort of the main part of the autonomy is the sensors, which is 
uh, the input that the autonomy code brings in. And we have the motor controller sensors and the camera information. The motor controller sensors bring in information from the motors themselves, such as encoder information, power usage, and RPM and speed, those sorts of things, uh, and feed that into the Odroid, which the autonomy is processed. And then the camera sends in visual information that the Odroid processes to uh, identify AR tanks that we have placed on the hopper, and we use this for localization purposes. So the, the, the core of the autonomy is built up using ROS nodes. These nodes interact with each other and act as sort of individual systems working together to create an overall system. Uh, we have at, the, at the, the top of the system a control node, which actually sends out information to the motors and the actuators. And that node brings in information from, for example, the path following node, which brings information from the path planning, which brings from the mapping, which actually brings in from the camera. So there's a chain of information that's passed through node to node and eventually out to the motors. And, then, and it's broken up into a modular system that if something goes wrong in a particular system, we know where that is located, which node that's coming from because of the modular system we built up. So this is the final product in design form. Like Carter mentioned, we weren't able to fully implement our design, but we have created a significant amount of documentation for future teams to implement uh, what we have designed here. Uh, so for our testing results versus goals, uh, the mechanical electrical reliability for the test runs that we were using and uh, simulations, it proved uh, to be effective for the system itself. And then for autonomy, we were able to develop localization and tracking for the system. Uh, this is our project management budget. It was uh, what we used to purchase new components, and this was the estimated expense of $5,400. Uh, we also developed a risk management matrices, and this is our overall one, which uh, we changed some values, such as uh, we changed the autonomy failure. This was when we discovered that we weren't going to be able to implement autonomy soon enough. So instead of failing with autonomy completely during competition, we decided that we weren't going to use autonomy for this year's competition. Therefore, uh, reducing the probability to one, but still severe because we lost points uh, for the competition itself. Uh, we also adjusted the risk uh, severity of the parts being difficult to source. Uh, we discovered that some motors might have been difficult to source initially, but Anaheim Automation was accommodating us very well. Uh, this is our project management Gantt chart. All we have left to do for this year is to finish uh, final documentation and go to competition. Lastly, we wanted to thank everyone that's involved in this project, from NASA to our advisors to our sponsors and the School of Mines and our team members as well.